Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast in part two with my interview with Reese. But I'm going to go this pass right over to Mike, the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. Yeah, Neil, I am great. And I am. I am so excited. Reese Palmer is resilient, groundbreaking, fabulous in every way. The host of uh, Color Me Country radio show. You've been to the Opry. You've been to the White House. You've done so many things. Revival, I love, love, love. The album Seeds, my favorite song right now of all time, I think. Reese, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Thank yeah, you. I'm so glad Great that you're intro, here. By the way, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so glad that you're here to join us. I am such a fan. Uh, you, I just admire you in so many different ways. And one of the things that, that I admire about you is you are who you are. Like you, you talk about things that other people would not, you address things that should be addressed, but other people would be afraid to address. And you're not afraid of it. You just do what you want to do. And I love that. I love that, that you have that freedom that you feel that freedom because you're that gifted and that talented you should do whatever it is you want to do and seeds man watching that music video broke my heart like i was tearing up watching that video and and uh love seems to be just kind of woven in everything that you do and so i'm curious like in, in writing seeds and doing the video and, and doing all of that uh how did that feel for you emotionally like what what was it like um well first of all thank you um for saying that i so i i am from uh, pittsburgh as neil mentioned i was born in pittsburgh but um i spent i spent part of my childhood um in st louis and in 2014 um a young man by the name of michael brown was murdered in ferguson missouri and there was a subsequent uprising in that neighborhood. And so, you know, people that I grew up with were posting about this before it made it to national news. And I remember like watching all of this unfold, like from day one up until, you know, when they decided that um, they weren't going to take the police officer um, to trial. And you know, everything that happened after that. And I remember being, I remember feeling very sad and feeling very frustrated and then wanting to, um, wanting to say something in the midst of everything that was going on, but like not really being sure what to say. And so I wanted to, I always tend to kind of lean towards the positive. And so I appreciate you saying that, that there is like, there's that you feel a thread of love because I try to always um, perpetuate that and to, to make sure that's where I'm coming from. Um, and it was hard for a really long time. And then I saw this quote and it was just, it was a great quote. It, it just fit the moment. And it was that they tried to cut us down, but they didn't know that we were seeds. And I think so many of the people in Ferguson and, and so many people, as we saw, you know, in, in the summer of 2020, just feel like disenfranchised. They, they feel frustrated, they feel um, unheard. And that felt like that quote was empowering. And it was the kind of message that I felt like people needed to hear in that moment. And so it's like, regardless of what the circumstances are, regardless of what outside forces see you as or want you to be, you are who you are and um and it's in and, and and nothing can take that away from you and so that's um that's where my heart was and where my head was when we wrote seeds and i just wanted it to be something that um called people to action but it also empowered people because I think mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, you don't really feel empowered in those moments. And so I just wanted to remind everybody that, no, no, you have power. Yeah, wow. and you did so in such a beautiful way. I, I love it. It's Thank you. perfect. You know, and I, I Kim, I just think that what Reese is able to do is she really is groundbreaking in so many 
aspects and that's what makes her the the star that she is today because she can really relate to those fans when you agree risa risi that okay. that's it. yeah absolutely all right kim next question you have risi yeah so um i i love everything you have to say and it's so true i mean we we live in this time of um turmoil unfortunately and polarization in so many ways but it's really kind of love that brings us together and that does seem to be your message that it's about you know people are people all over the world you know we're all walking on the same earth we're all just people and we should be in this more together and when i listen to your songs they feel uniting and i i you know i don't know if you write them to make them feel like that but man um there's just something about them that it just feels like there it's music for everyone and music can bring us together we, yeah, we, no, I, the power, yeah, music is, is extremely powerful in that way. And yeah, I do. Like, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I don't feel like that. Like, I don't always, I can't say that I wake up every morning and I'm just like, let's unite everyone. But like, <laughs> I, I, I think the overwhelming thing is, again, I'm an optimist. I'm a, I'm a cautious optimist, but I'm an optimist. And I believe, um, I believe wholeheartedly that the only way we're going to get out of any mess and this mess in particular that we're in this country's in right now is together that's the only way we're going to make it out is together mm -hmm. yeah i totally agree with that you know you call yourself an optimist i'm an optimist and i was married for a number of years my husband passed away a few years ago and and he was a pessimist but he would say that that he was a realist and that mm -hmm. I live in La La Land. <laughs> so <laughs> I think sometimes maybe maybe I uh, put my foot over into La La Land, but what a better way to live. I mean, you know, I think we get to pick how happy we are, right? And we get to pick how much we love and how much we share in the world. And uh, and so, you know, to, to pick joy, to choose that and choose to be happy, you've been through some crap in your life. And, and look at you. I mean, you started singing at such a young age you've had such a career that's had some ups and downs one point in time you were thinking about throwing in the towel all together I think you know after your yeah. daughter was born and uh but but nothing can hold you back because you've got this god-given beautiful talent and that you need to share with the world so I for one am happy that you didn't throw in the towel that you're here and you're sharing it but I know that there's lots and lots of me's out there and uh, going through the tough times, what does that do for you as a songwriter? Does it does it change what you write? Is anything had, you know, does does everything that goes on in your life influence what goes on paper? Oh yeah, no, I I write um, one hundred percent from experience. Um, so yeah, no, the good, the bad, the the ugly all ends up. <laughs> for better or for worse, ends up in a song. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it definitely, life definitely influences my art, for sure, for sure. I, I, I find it hard to write about anything that I, I don't experience or, or just relate to very deeply. It's, it's hard for me to find a way into it. Mm -hmm. I know some people are really great at that. Like there are people that can write just really great stories. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that person. Like I yeah. just, that's not my strength. My strength is, um, is kind of once I'm able to gain a little bit of perspective on something that I can step back and I can try to write as honestly as I can about it. And, and impressive yeah. that you're doing both, right? Cause everyone's now there's songwriters and then there's singers. A lot right. of people aren't doing both anymore. Why no, is it's true. And like, you know, when I when I came to Nashville, um, it's it's actually it's a it's a lot more common now um, than it was like when I first got started, like when I came to Nashville in the early 2000s and worked on my debut album, I was one of the few artists that had a hand in writing pretty much everything on the album. Um, and, and, and I remember because I was signed to an indie um a lot of the majors were like well we'd have to find other songs and we'd have to do this and that and you know i'm very thankful that the record label that i was 
signed to, um, believed in my songs enough to let it go with, with me as a writer on everything. So yeah, it's, it's important to me. It's hard to sing something if you can't relate to it. Yeah, that's almost like an actor having, but they have to do it. They have to go to what who the writer is, but they do. Right. Then, but they do put their spin on acting. I was talking right. to an actor today about it, uh, Costas Mandalore, and he was talking about specifically enough how certain amazing people like Sir Anthony Hopkins they took he takes the idea of whatever the writer wants, but creates that character in his own mm -hmm. to make it what it is for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there are some people like you know, and I don't want to downplay singers that don't write because I think there's an art to being a great interpreter as well. I just, mm. just for me personally, like, you know, some people like Whitney Houston didn't necessarily write every song that she sang, but she was an incredible interpreter. And right. so, right. yeah, and, and, and- Yeah, that's interesting, I guess. And, you know, a lot of our favorite artists, a lot of the iconic artists weren't necessarily songwriters, but they were phenomenal, you know, what you said, Neil, they were phenomenal actors, phenomenal interpreters. All right. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. It's um, it's so true, and it and it's like it's two different talents. Uh, and if you happen to have mm -hmm. both of them, it's wonderful. But it is. Uh, writing is different than singing, and so to yeah. to be able to do both is pretty incredible. Absolutely, Kim. You have that final question you always ask ask our guests. Go ahead with that question. Yeah. So I uh, so I lived a year. Uh, believe it or not, I dedicated a year to figuring out the true meaning of love. And, mm. and I did it. I figured it out. I was in Haiti most of the year when I was doing it. So it was crazy. I was chased by a motorcycle gang. Oh my gosh, some crazy stuff happened. But I'm always curious, Reese, if I had to ask you, how do you define love? What, what would you say? Oh my God. <laughs> I was going to say, you know the answer. So I want to know. Um, <laughs> So I, how do I define love? I, this is, you don't know how right on time this question is. Um, and so like, give me just, <laughs> I'm trying to find the words because I'm, I'm in the process of kind of redefining what I thought it was. I, you know, um, throughout my youth and, uh, in my twenties, I thought it was one thing. And now that I'm in my forties, I, I see it very differently. Um, I think love is number one, a choice. It's a choice that you make on a daily basis. Um, just like I think happiness is in some, in some shapes and forms. Um, I think it is acceptance. And what I mean by that is like, it's like an unconditional acceptance, like, meaning I see you, I see all of you, like I see the person or I see the thing and I see all of it. I see the negative, I see the positive and I know how those things affect me and, and, and the relationship, whatever the relationship is, this doesn't necessarily just mean like man, woman, romantic or whatever, um, but I choose it and I, and I accept it and um, yeah, I mean, that's all I got right now. I think I like it. That's, I like that's it. Good. That's, good. That's, that's, yeah, that's really good. I think it's unconditional acceptance. All right. Yeah, well, I'll send you a book and then you'll know all about it. Yeah. Okay, I would love that. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we'll Thank definitely you. get that definitely off air. Uh, Reese, where's the best place people can check you out? Social media, all that stuff, the best place? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, my so Well, my website is reesepalmer.com or reesepalmermusic.com. It goes to the same place. And then everything else is Reese Palmer Music. Or Reese Palmer official on TikTok, YouTube, uh, uh, all the, the all of the social spaces, yep. Instagrams, all that. All right, Reese, we appreciate it. Thanks again. Thanks, y'all. All right, that was the special Thank you. the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. Guys, take care.